Danielle Cook is a professional nutritionist and cooking instructor, and Adrienne Cook is a gardening and cooking writer. We're excited to have them with us today for our live online cooking demonstration all about lovely spring recipes. So please help me welcome Danielle and Adrienne. Thank you, Libby. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm Adrian, And I'm Danielle. It's good, to, right. good to see you. Good to see you too. Um, so yeah, so we're going to be doing spring recipes today. Lots of great things coming on in spring. Uh, you know, it's kind of the first flush of the, the vegetables of the summer. So today we're doing a lot with, we're doing a certain amount with peas, but we're also doing rhubarb and uh, hopefully mint. Be, mint. And Herbs. these are really to provide you some ideas for what's going to be happening at the farmer's market. You're already starting to see a little bit, but in the next few weeks, you'll really see a lot of these fresh, coming in fresh, uh, super, super crispy and delicious and sweet. And um, so lots to play with. Yes. I mean, I have been using asparagus like crazy this spring. So I, I decided, we decided we we're actually going to be um, going more into the peas, which haven't quite hit the farmer's markets and, entirely although pea shoots have the yeah. the, the greens right um yeah. but they'll be going all the way through june so you're right. going to have lots of opportunity to really to really uh savor them yeah um, and then of course lots of great rhubarb which came in a little bit late this year um but there's plenty of it out there so i think you're gonna just um love 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 our rhubarb custard cake but we're so not gonna do that yet <laughs> So let's get started, shall we? With, yes. With the uh, the it's pea salad, this pea and radish salad. I'm yes. going to switch us to our overhead, so you can watch as we go along, and um, you can get a closer look at what we're doing. And then we'll come back, and you'll see our lovely faces for a few minutes before we transition to the cake. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So what have we got here? Oh, look at that! That's so pretty. Yes. Yes. Peas. Look at the. I mean, not uh, peas. Radishes. Radishes. We got sugar snaps over here. Mm -hmm. And we've got regular snap pea, uh, regular uh, snow, peas. snow peas. So I'm falling over my words. Yeah. And then the mint. And and we got loads of mint. Look at this. Yes. All around. Mint from, from the garden. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we're going to start by cutting up some of these, um, these, these peas. Yeah, I got to start. So yeah. what we're doing here is we've got, I'm, I'm cutting these peas into thirds. And the idea here is just to kind of show off the, what's inside them. That's what makes it look so pretty. Mm -hmm. Yep. Right there. That you see that little pea? Yeah. And that's nice because the dressing will get into these little that's right. tunnels. Here's another one. And, and, and but as you slice them, all right, and we see that. It's, yeah. it's kind of a little bit deeper down. But as, you, as they get more mature and they get fatter, you'll see fatter peas. We don't have a whole lot of fat peas in here, but we have... Plenty of them, and they're really. We've parboiled these because they actually didn't come from the farmers market. They're not in yet, but I, you, the the directions do not talk about uh, blanching them. But I threw them in a hot water for just about thirty seconds because I think it they they crunch. I like the color and the crunch. You won't have to do this if you you won't, definitely don't have to do the parboiling if you're getting them fresh from the, from the gardener from the farmers market because yeah. they'll be they'll be sweet and tender. Some, sometimes if they sit around too long, they, they lose some of that tenderness and also some of the sweetness. So be sure to try to get them fairly quickly. Oh, you're going to go ahead and do Yeah, okay. so I'm going to do some ahead. snow peas, and I'm, I'm kind of cheating because I stacked them and I've cut them in half. These are also, these have also been blanched. Um, but uh, again, you know, we can, you can use your imagination, see what's fresh at the markets. You don't have to just stick with this sugar snap peas, although you could do asparagus. Asparagus would go well yeah, with this. Yeah, yeah. And what I've done is I've made the salad and added some um, frozen, unless you can find it fresh, some frozen frozen peas, the little petite peas. You just defrost them and, and add them. Don't cook them. Just defrost them. Put them right in. So triple peas. Triple peas. Snow so really, there peas. is no cooking on this at all. If you're getting your peas fresh from the farmer's market or from your garden, you're getting, you're, you don't have to cook them. Uh, you, and if you don't, if you get them from the store, you might want to parboil them real quickly, uh, just to blanch, essentially. Yeah. Um, and you don't want to cook. The asparagus don't need to be cooked. They could, you could just do the little tops and eat them raw. Um, or if you want to, you know, use the whole thing, then you would probably want to, again, do a little blanching. Leave them very crisp. 
but um yeah Right. Very crisp. And yeah, yeah, as as Adrian said, you know, if you're getting them fresh from your farmer's market, you're you're probably not going to need to do any blanching. I think we've said that quite a few yes. times. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so you're going to keep on that and then you're going to um, do a nice cut with our um, radishes. Now, today okay. we're using red radishes. Here, I'll okay. give you the rest of this. I All right. Talk about, I want to talk about radishes. Okay. Talk about radishes. So we are, we're using these radishes that, that, uh, that were just pulled what on Wednesday or sometime like that. Yeah. I think you said, yeah. So they're really, they're still very fresh and you could eat the radish tops. In fact, what I do is I will frequently buy the radishes if they have beautiful tops, even if I don't need radishes and I just clip the tops off for salads. They're, um, they're kind of, they're like arugula. They're a little tart and peppery. And this goes so well with, um, with this, you know, this combination that we've got here with the peas. So in this particular case, I've got one right on here, right? Oh, there we yeah. go, right there. <laughs> <laughs> There's my pea, my radish. That's why we're doing um, these. But in this particular case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this in half down the middle, and we're going to leave the leaves on. And there we have the two radish halves. Where, can Another, you see uh, that? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, Perfect. there they are. And we just put them right in that like that. So that's just for, for the ones that you're going to hold on to the, to the tops with. If you don't want the tops, obviously you take them off and you cut them with however you want. And in this particular case, this one's got a little bit. A little bit of a root. Of, yeah, a little bit of roots on there. So just. Yeah, so look off. for the, if you look for the real baby ones in the, in the market. And of course, we just have the red, but they're. You can find oh, the them. the colors are wonderful. Yes, they? yes, yes. Or you can, if you can get a hold of some um, watermelon radishes, which I was hoping to get uh, this week, but I, I was not successful. Um, but those are beautiful too. And I'll tell you something about water rad watermelon radishes. Yes. What you want to do is if you're using watermelon radishes, is you want to slice them thin, rather like what we're going to do with these, and get a, a bowl of ice water and put the sliced watermelon radishes in the bowl. If you can slice them as thin as these are, you can almost see through them. I don't know, can we do that? There we go. And uh, they're really, really thin. Uh, a mandolin would, is helpful, but you don't need one. And you put them in the bowl of ice water and you leave them there for about 20 to 30 minutes. And they'll come out and they'll be kind of curled. Each slice will be a little bit curled, like almost like a little rosette. It'll be very, very pretty. And then you put those in the salad. That is, just makes it look beautiful. Yeah. But so, we're using regular radishes, which I, I also, I think they're just wonderful. They, these small ones are nice with this salad because they just give you a, just a, a, a you know, a little bite of, of that radish flavor as you're eating the sweet, sweet peas. So it's kind of a nice, nice counter um, flavor to the peas. Mm -hmm. um, can you all explain what exactly a watermelon radish is, like how it differs from the radish that you're currently using? Sure, that's a great question. Um, so a watermelon radish is, has nothing to do with watermelons. It's just purely the look of it. When you cut it open, what will happen is the outside is green, the inside is pink like this, and then there's a whole bunch of kind of watermelon colored pink in the, in the middle of it. It's got sort of straight, comes out of the middle and it just kind of like, it just, it's like a little, almost like a, not a star pattern exactly, but like a bloom of pink on the inside. So it's green and then red like this on the outside, the dark red, and then a light, lighter pink, like a watermelon color on the inside. And then, so when you cut it like this, that's, it looks like a piece of watermelon. So, so that's why they call it that. Yeah. It's, it's, it's um, also very large. It's also commonly mistaken for uh, a turnip because from the exterior, yes. they resemble a turnip, they right? Do. I mean, you wouldn't know that to cut it open, you're going to get this vibrant red interior. They're absolutely beautiful. They are. And they get, you can get small ones, but they do tend, I mean, they grow very fast. So they'll, you know, they do tend to get big very quickly. So you, you'll see a lot of big ones. They also are much less pungent than the traditional radishes. They are, that's true, uh, they are. And again, radishes get uh, pungent, more pungent in the, in the heat. So if you have a hot spring, you'll probably get spicier radishes. Um, and if you have a cool one, they'll be a little milder. Okay, um, all right. I think so we're, we're good here. 
Okay, so the next thing we want to do is our mint. You're going to do your mint, um, and I am going to start our uh, very simple dressing. So our dressing is going to consist of a little piece of garlic, which I'm going to mince, and I'm just going to whisk in some lemon juice, some fresh squeezed lemon juice, and um, a little bit of balsamic vinegar, and some uh, olive oil and salt and pepper. So can you can- remove this a little bit? I have, could still have to do the, the, the cheese, but I think I'm gonna do yeah, the cheese. Yeah, you can just, just set, set that, that right there. there. Okay. And I will start on that. Um, so yeah, so there are a lot of, um, you know, the, the, the going back to the radishes, they are really very healthful. Uh, as well, you know, they, they really do help. I mean, radishes pickle up really nicely. Oh yeah, they're so good. For yeah, the pickle. yeah. I mean, think about all the uh, daikon and the the uh, the Asian sure. kimchi no, uh, you radish. You can put these in kimchi. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, you can make a essentially make a radish kimchi mm -hmm. too, not mm -hmm. just cabbage. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so lots of um, lots of color and uh, lots of crunch and lots of goodness in these in these radishes okay so my dressing consists of a tablespoon and do a little bit more of each the lemon juice and now the balsamic vinegar and I don't I don't know about you guys but I like to be very conservative on how I dress my salads because I like to taste all the yummy veggies that are in there and I don't like my salads swimming in dressing do we want to talk for a second about the ricotta salata? I think and before you before you get to that, could you share what type of mint you were using? Was there a specific, a specific kind of mint? There was a question about that. Oh, it's just mint from the garden. Mint, yeah. you know, mint is a weed, so this is just this is a uh, peppermint. It's not a it's not spearmint. It's not peppermint. It, no, it's it's, it's spearmint. spearmint. Yeah, you, you can tell, tell what it. peppermint is. Peppermint is very very strong. This is a spearmint. And I like the spearmint because it's a little lower key. My husband loves the peppermint, so he's always asking me to put that one in. There's lots of different mints. Mm -hmm. um, there's apple mint and orange mint and um, chocolate mint. Chocolate mint. And, uh, you know, and they literally do have that, those flavors of orange and, and mm -hmm. lemon and, and chocolate. And you, you, could, chocolate mint you could use any of them. I mean, I, I'm not sure about the chocolate. The chocolate mint is not really, really, really chocolatey. No, it just reminds you of chocolate when yeah. you taste it. But since this is such a spring salad, you know, you could really, you could, you could use a lemon mint or an orange mint in this. Easily. And mint is pretty wide. Fresh mint is pretty widely available um, these days. I, I find it in most stores and I don't like to get the little plastic package packs of them. I like it when they when they sell them in the bundles. But know, they, I mean, it's so easy to grow. If you don't mind it taking over the garden. Well, put it in a pot. <laughs> anyway, let's talk about your your the salada. The salada. Yeah. So this is made from ricotta. Um, if any of you are familiar, it's a cottage cheese type of of, um, of cheese, and it is um, sold in tubs. And it's used. It's if you've ever had a burrata, that's what's in the inside of burrata. It's uh, it's it, as I said, it tastes. It looks a lot like it appears a lot like cottage cheese. Only it's more creamy than, in my opinion. Don't you think? It's yes. A, it's got, yes. It's kind of a creamier yes. flavor to it. So it could be used in desserts. I'm gonna go ahead and toss this a little bit. Keep this tossing. is a salata that has. A, a, this is this a ricotta is has been dried out, and and pressed, and salted. So it's got quite a bit of salt in it. If you're trying to avoid salt, well, it's sort of salt, about as salty as feta cheese is. So think about that. Um, and but, which, by the way, feta cheese would be fine to uh, to use as a, a substitute if you're looking for something other than the ricotta. But you should try the ricotta salata. It's a little. It's really different in flavor and in, and eating experience. It's creamier. It's got. It's just got a, a really nice flavor to it that um, is just a little different from the feta. So that's what we're using today. Do you want me to keep going? No, I think we're good. I just want to make sure you guys can see this beautiful yeah. salad. Yeah. Let's hold it right up here. There we go. Look at that. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, isn't that pretty? And you can imagine if you get a hold of purple radishes as well, um, 
or the watermelon radishes. It's just, it's going to be a, you don't such have to have pretty. those, but it's nice to have a little bit of color. And I think the radishes do a really nice job with the color, frankly, in this, but imagine, yeah, the, the, the multicolored ones, the small multicolored ones. And if you can get a small, find a small watermelon one, I think that may be another reason why they call them watermelons because they grow so big. Yeah. But anyway, there you go. So enjoy that. Enjoy your peas. Your, your pea salad and enjoy your <laughs> your spring peas that will be around for another month and a half, maybe a little over a month. So questions, we would yeah. love to take your questions or comments. Yeah, so could you share maybe some other ingredients that could be added to the salad to make it more robust? Yes, that's, that's, a, great, that's a great question. Uh -huh. Actually, you could, you could make a whole meal out of this you could add shrimp would be a wonderful addition i mean think great of protein to add yeah. yeah and the colors would look really good with this another one is smoked salmon i keep thinking about the sort of the reds and the pinks to 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 just make it prettier against all the green that we have in here. i also think that um there's of course the protein in the cheese but if you wanted to go a little bit more i would say that this is a kind of salad that would stand up better to a seafood or um um, you could put some nuts in there. Um, you could put some, uh, uh, the pizzas. Yes. I was just going to say that. Oh, we just think alike. We, we must be related. <laughs> yes. Oh, one other thing you could do is just to add, uh, eggs. Like you would have said, any mm -hmm. do, do quarters of eggs, you know, hard boiled hard, eggs, hard, hard boiled eggs. Yeah. Don't put them in raw. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't throw a bunch of steak on top of this one. No, 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 no. no, no. no. I, I think so you want to something that looks pretty. Yeah, someone in the chat suggested peaches. How would peaches work with that? Yes, peaches, peaches, peaches. peaches. Mm. You know, they're not going to be around the same time as the as the beautiful um, peas. That's the only problem. We're not getting our peaches here locally until probably about the end of June. You anyway. know what would be good though, if you're talking about on the fruit thing, um, you can like do a quick pickle of blueberries in a little white vinegar and sugar and just let them sit for oh, a while. Oh, you are going all out there. I My know. God. I know. A little She's adding so much work to this. No. <laughs> you can keep pickled, pickled blueberries in the fridge. Just like I said, a little white vinegar and water. Just do a solution and a little sugar. And you don't even need the water, but the, the vinegar is going to be quite strong. But yeah. And you use... Just keep them in a jar in the fridge and it's amazing they they last like a week and they get crunchy and cold and they're like a, a, a you know crouton on there but they have a fruitiness to it so that would be it a would real, be very pretty. And pretty yes it would be very pretty I, I, would, you, would you ever do those fresh or strawberries or anything or the pickle um, is really your preference. yeah i think you could probably put strawberries and I'm, I'm not sure that i would actually because this salad doesn't really lend what about salad. a melon yeah that could be pretty that would be like Putting salmon in there. <laughs> cantaloupe. Color wise. Forget the salmon, put the cantaloupe. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> and is there a different kind of salad dressing that might work for this salad? A different kind? Salad dressing? Yes. This would work great with like a buttermilk uh, based salad dressing or even a, um, an avocado kind of green goddess dressing. Mm -hmm. If you didn't want it, the tartness of the, of the lemon and the, but you know, the balsamic's sweet. So it, it lends itself nicely to this, but yeah, you could totally go like on a creamy note and, um, yeah. a buttermilk dressing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ranch, kind of ranchy. Dressing. Yes, exactly. Yeah. All right. Well, I think that's it right now for questions. So if you want to jump into the rhubarb cake, but we'll jump right. back in if I have more. Okay, now we've got a lot of work ahead of us, lady. Okay. This is all worth it. No, I'm Let kidding. It's actually, aside. once you've done this once, once you've done this recipe once, you'll want to keep doing it because it's, um, it's, it's amazing with the rhubarb, but it's also going to be great with other fruits as we go through summer. So um, I'm actually going to uh, grab from behind our little prep things and you can you can move over to my spot. Okay. I'm making way for Danielle's wonderful you're gonna rhubarb. Use yep. Okay, um, so go. talk about a little bit about rhubarb Adrian. You ah rhubarb gardener yes. pro. Well you know I, you can certainly grow it in your garden. It doesn't it it stays right where it's supposed to it, it gets bigger uh, over the years but it doesn't do anything like take over the garden like like uh, mint would. Um, and it's easy to grow and it's, um, it just, you tuck it away somewhere and it's pretty. 
actually. One of the things about this that you should know though, is that the uh, leaves of the rhubarb are not edible. They cause, they have, they contain, what do we say, Ox uh, oxalic, uh, oxal oxalate, oxalate, oxalate acid, which is toxic. Yeah, um, it is it toxic. Gives you, it gives you, it'll put, get, you'll get blisters in your mouth and um, it causes, um, can cause nausea and it's just not pleasant. You, you don't want to go there. But the bottoms, I mean, the, the stalks, which look like, like, you know, they're, they're like uh, shard stalks. They're beautiful. And they're this a wonderful color. And mm -hmm. they've got a lot of fiber in them. The, the, rub, the, um, the rhubarb is actually very closely related to sorrel. I don't know if most of you have heard of sorrel, but it's, it's got, and sorrel, you can eat the, the, the uh, leaves. You eat mm -hmm. the whole thing. It's like rhubarb. It's got a very um, citrusy flavor to it. But rhubarb has kind of a, the same Oh, kind it's of very, very tangy. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But so, <clears throat> a couple things. So you see when they sell it, they've already lobbed off the leaves and left just a bit. Um, so when you prep it, which we'll do in a little bit, you want to make sure you get rid of all that. Some of the some of the rhubarb comes more green. Sometimes you get it red. The redder is going to be a higher level of antioxidants, which equates to good for you. <laughs> really, really good for you. Um, but yes, very high in, uh, very high in fiber, high in vitamin C, um, lots of, lots of goodness. So we're going to go ahead and switch back over to our overhead camera so I can take you through what we're going to be doing here with this great, um, cake. So there we go. We have actually, there's three parts to this cake. Um, there is when you, when you make it, um, we're going to have an egg and sugar mixture. We're going to have a sour cream and butter mixture, and then we have our dry goods. And so you're going to need three bowls, two smaller and one, one to hold the whole batter uh, when you start. So um, the, it, it, once you get the, the, three, the three bowls of different ingredients uh, together individually, it, then it all comes together fairly quickly. This is a great Foundation, as I mentioned, it's a great foundation cake for the rhubarb. You can even add, if you wanted to get real fancy, you could add some strawberries into it, but we're going to keep it just at the rhubarb level for right now. So my first thing is to do three, two eggs and one egg yolk. So you're going to need the three eggs and you do want to separate out that third egg into an egg yolk. And why? Because that's going to contribute to the density of what we're calling the quote unquote custard part. We're going to, the custard is going to essentially be a combination of the egg and the, you know, the, the nice thick, rich egg mixture along with some sour cream. I have one and a quarter cups of sugar here, and I'm using the uh, evaporated cane sugar, which is, um, not the refined granulated sugar. I'm just going to go ahead and add that on top. And I'm going to need to beat this. And so we're going to be noisy for just a minute. But before we do that, I'm going to explain to Adrian. Okay. That'll and you good. all what we're going to do here. So <clears throat> let me just show them the plate here. Oh, sorry. This is our second, our second mixture. We have a quarter cup of sour cream. We have four tablespoons of melted butter. We have some lemon zest that I zested earlier. We're gonna use one teaspoon. So if you can combine these, the um, cream, the melted butter, the one teaspoon of zest, and let's not oh, forget, right. this is totally optional, but I, I think you should put in two tablespoons of the rum. I'm down. You're down I'm for totally that? I'm down for that. Okay. And then I'm gonna just um, switch this on. It's gonna take literally 60 seconds to whip this. So give us a second while she's working on that and um, okay. we'll be back for the next round.
Okay, so what you want to achieve here is you don't want to lose your propellers out of the machine like I am doing. But anyway, light, light, fluffy, pale color on the eggs and the sugar. Um, you can keep whipping until it gets very, very, very fluffy if you like. That will change the ultimately the consistency of the cake itself. Nothing wrong with that, but just it'll become more uh, more like a cake as opposed to a custard. Okay, so I'm Danielle, not gonna. Yes. Before you move on, you put in I think a specific type of sugar, the evaporated cane sugar, and someone mm -hmm. is wondering what the difference is between that and granulated sugar. That's a good question. So the evaporated cane sugar I like because it. It is, uh, it's the sugar in its most natural state. Um, it's still, it's, it's not a white, ref a very fine granulated sugar. It's, it's actually got a little more texture to it. It's uh, slightly beige in color because it retains the minerals from the cane. Um, so it has, it is the sugar before it goes through the process of becoming granulated sugar. Granulated sugar essentially is when all the minerals have been extracted and the, and the sugar has gone through a refined process. So in order to, to, to keep the sweet and the sugars to the most natural state, my, my preference is to use cane sugar. Well, I like the taste of it. Yes, it's also got almost, I wouldn't say quite like a brown sugar taste or a mapley taste, but it's, it's less intensive of its sweetness. Sweet. Yes, it is. Right? Yep. All right, this is done. I've got it all mixed up together here. I've got the butter, the rum, and the sour cream, and the lemon, the lemon uh, zest. Well, you followed the directives perfectly. <laughs> you get another job. Okay, so here's the, uh, the um, mixture she's talking about, nice and thick and creamy. And that's now gonna go into my, um, into my mixture here. Okay. You can put that behind you. Let me just... Mix this up and um, get all of that goodness. While, while you're mixing, could you also use turbinado sugar in this? Yes, you could also use turbinado sugar. You could. Um, in fact, we're going to use a little turbinado sugar to sprinkle on the very top of the uh, cake when we're all done. So you could use turbinado all the way through. It's uh, it's. A little bit more expensive, but certainly um, it, tastes great it tastes it tastes great. Let me just oh, cool. while you fix that, can you also sub in bourbon instead of rum? We have somebody yeah. who does rum. Yeah, <laughs> going to talk in a second about the other combinations of fruit and and liqueurs that you could use. Let me just do a quick mix on this. And then, so yeah, let's talk about what's going into this cake. We have our dry goods next. And our dry goods are going to consist of one cup of flour, baking powder and salt, cardamom, lovely, lovely cardamom. What a great pairing. And some cinnamon. So Adrian, if you could mix all together. this together. Yes, I, I need, we need one teaspoon of the cardamom. And um, what is not in your recipe, but it's optional. I like to put in a, just a little bit of cinnamon as well. You don't have to do that. Now keep in mind, there's a lot going on in the, in the batter here. We already have lemon zest. So, you know, I think the pairing between cardamom and rhubarb is just like a natural pairing. It goes so well. It goes great with apricots too. That's another thing that cardamom. Cardamom does. and apricots. Yeah. Wonderful combination. Half a teaspoon. Okay. Half. That's good. That's plenty. Um, and um, the other great pairing uh, for this cake, well, there are a number of different things you could, you could go with. And probably some of you out there are, are already have ideas of what, what else you could do. But um, plums, when they come into season, stone fruits. Oh, yes. Plums, and that is wonderful with cardamom. <laughs> well, that's it true. It's also, you could also ditch the cardamom or maybe not ditch it, but um, use a little bit of Sambuca. 
um, oh, in the in the bat in the as really? in, in place of your yeah. In so that has your a uh, that's kind of an any a, a liquid and it's anise. yes. Which did is you, go ahead. Did you did you uh, did you sift the flour before you put this in? No, I didn't. Okay. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't bother. Okay. But anyway, the plum and the sambuca. I think that's a great pairing. I think adding cardamom on top might be a little too much, but um, you know you could play around with that. Mm -hmm. So here's the next step. We're going to now add the dry goods into the batter. And this is now your foundation batter is complete. You can go and have fun putting different fruits on top. However, one last step, which is a very important step. You need to chill the batter for about 15 minutes um, or upwards of, you know, 30 minutes. The reason for that is we're going to put the fruit on top and the batter needs to set. And if you don't give it enough time to chill, what'll happen is your fruit's gonna sink to the bottom of the cake and you won't have this very pretty um, visual, which again, it's not the end of the world. If you don't care about that, that's fine. You can just go ahead and put this straight into the oven with the fruit sunk to the bottom. But if you want to do a nice little pattern, which is kind of fun, um, it's, it's a very good idea to uh, let this sit for a few minutes. So I'm going to pour that in. And don't worry, we're not going to sit here and watch this set for 20 minutes in the refrigerator because we have one ready to go. Um, but this is a spring form pan that I'm using. I did a nice uh, buttering at the bottom and I sprinkled flour and so prepared the pan with that in that manner if you have a um a spray you could do that i don't really I love the sprays see she loves the sprays i don't like the taste of the sprays i don't, I don't like... think i think i think they're great I, you can hold the pan up you know yeah sideways yeah you can you you hold well there you what are, are you talking but, about? but yeah. if you hold it like sideways and you do the spray oh like that, yeah then it goes right in yeah okay it covers the whole thing i don't know have you ever read the list of ingredients in that stuff I know you don't use it very often. Fair enough. You know, your, 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 your body can forgive you from that. It's mostly oil and flour. Yeah. Um, okay. All right. So we are going to pop this in the refrigerator. Can you do that? Yes, for I me, can. Please? And um, th at this point, while that's, while that's chilling, you can get your oven to, preheat, which I, um, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, uh, you know, take up the time when the noise and everything of preheating right in the second. But at this point, you would preheat the oven and then you would get your rhubarb ready. So, um, Do you want me to take this out? yes, I need that one. You can just switch them around. Yep. And we have one that's nicely chilled. And I can show you when I move it, it's not, it's barely moving, right? It's been it's really in there. Set. It's really nice. It's been in there for a little while. Yeah. Um, it really does make a difference on the how this bakes. So that's why this is an important step. Okay, now comes the fun part. We're gonna decorate with our rhubarb. And for this, you can do, you can just cut bite-sized pieces and throw them on top if you like. You can do whatever you want. You can, as I mentioned, you can even add some strawberries into it, make it kind of fancy. But to prep them, we're going to get rid of the stem part, right? This white part that's where it connected to the to the base of this the uh, plant. Get rid of that, and of course, get rid of our um, leaf. Our the toxic leaf. leaf. No, don't want the toxic leaf. No. The recipe calls for a pound uh, of rhubarb, which is going to be the equivalent of about five medium uh, stalks. Four, you're going to need four to five. Uh, you may need a little bit less depending on how you pack, how many little pieces you pack on there. But um, I'm just going to show you what I like to do, which is um, make an actual pattern with this. So what I'm going to do is this is an eight inch round. So I'm going to cut approximately a four inch, four inch pieces because we, we're going to make divide this pie into quarters and you'll see what I mean in a second and I'm just going to cut cut the pieces to fit now this is very thick so I'm going to actually go down the middle and cut it down the middle um, when this bakes it does get very soft um, so you don't have any trouble cutting the cake 
So I'm gonna just lay the one piece. Let me see if I can come under the camera a little bit better. Yeah. So I'm gonna lay one piece right into the middle like this. And it, it's sitting very comfortably on top. I'm gonna cut that just a little bit smaller. One, two. And so the idea is we're gonna make quadrants. And so I'm each one's a little bit smaller than the one before it. That's right, okay. that's right. Can, you can't quite see, because the unfortunately the, the pan is kind of blocking your view there of. But you'll be doing the other side. Big. You can do the other side. Yeah, it's like, Adrian, you could, or Danielle, you could rotate the cake pan around once you finish that quadrant. We can see sort of the top half of the, of the, the pan. There you go. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I'll tuck one little piece in there. And then I'm going to do the same thing. Actually, I want the redder pieces. They're prettier. Yeah, but you can, it's nice because you could do one quadrant all green and one quadrant. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. Let's see. That's a great idea. We can, should we try so that? Is there a, there's no flavor difference or is there a flavor difference between the green and the red portions of the rhubarb? There isn't. It's just in the pigment of the, of the, um, of the rhubarb. The, the, the old, it, it, it takes on the green hue over time so that the tops are the last part that really get green so but you could also get some some um stalks that are if you grow them you can get stuff some stalks that are completely green if you want the color but yeah as far as the flavor is concerned it doesn't make any difference they're just as equally uh i don't know what would you say not sweet but uh, equally flavorful <laughs> equally flavorful you know um in a lot of middle eastern cooking the rhubarb is used in stews as a savory yes um, it's actually great that way it is and i love it just you know kind of boiled with a little sugar and um served over ice cream it's yeah. so good it's okay. just so good and there's no need to peel the rhubarb there was a question no. about you don't want to peel it there's lots of good flavor in the peel and there's lots of good nutrition in the peel oh yeah no no no, no you don't want to flavor you don't want to peel it no i mean that's part of the the health benefits is the peel the it's stringy it's very fibrous and that's yeah. a good thing yeah that's a good thing i mean you know the um you can stick the whole thing my this is what my husband used to when his mom grew it in the garden you stick the whole thing in sugar and just eat it like that ah, eat it raw like that yeah I mean, raw rhubarb does go very nicely in, in uh, salads. If you if you like the flavor of it, you just cut them in small pieces so that you don't get too much of it. And you add it to a like a salad that might have some fruit in it. So it sort of goes with the fruit, you know, with the, the mm -hmm. sweetness of the fruit. Mm -hmm. And um, Let's see, I'll I mean, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure whether most kids would enjoy it, but by the time you get to have grown up taste buds, it's yeah. actually quite delicious. Yeah. So as you can see, I have now used three and I'm starting a fourth stock of, um, of, of rhubarb. So you can actually pack quite a bit into these. And if you hug them tight, the layers tight. Um, and you want to do that. You want to pack them as tight as you can because they shrink. Yes. And so yes. you'll see, like only you'll see just little sliver, not slivers, but you'll see little just much narrower and smaller rhubarb once it comes out of the oven. And it's so, it's got such a great contrast of that sourness with the, uh, with the sweet of the batter. So isn't that neat? Now, you know, this is a, taking a few extra minutes to really have some fun with it. Like I said, you can just do a bunch of bite-sized pieces and, um, and lay those all on top. You get um, more rhubarb in it that way. But I literally just placed them on top and um, did not, you know, push on them at all. And then we have, can you reach the sugar that's in the back I there? I can. Okay. So then we have the turbinata sugar, which is a little crunchier. It's, it's more coarse. Uh, it's the raw sugar. Um, and I love this because it, it just gives it kind of a, a nice um, uh, crunchy sugary topping yeah um 
and about a tablespoon. You don't need much more than that. I mean, if you're really, really love it sweet, you could go. Well, and the other thing is, Danielle, I think you probably want to save a little bit for putting some on afterwards, too, because a lot of that will disappear into the batter. Well, and yeah, it does. A little, little bit of that crunchy sugar on top when you, you take it out of the oven, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So this is the before, and I guess we can give away, get, show you the big, the, you know, the big secret revealed so we can see the how beautiful this is once it goes in the oven 350 degrees for about um 35 to 40 minutes and when it comes out this is what it looks like so you can see the what a beautiful job Miss Adrian has done with the cake decorating. Isn't that so nice? Let's have some hearts. Let's give a round of applause to our Adrian for the beautiful decoration. I had to find to, to really look to find small strawberries. The strawberries are so huge. Yeah. Yeah. But, but strawberries on this would be so wonderful. Strawberries served on the side and whipped cream or ice cream. Um, and you can see that the cake itself, it rose, but then it's 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 custardy. It's it's I chilled it. Um overnight it keeps great you want to keep and it in the fridge the rims in between them yes are exactly very, they're custody too yes and really you get these different hues the rhubarb is shrunk down but you still get these lovely hues of 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 green and red um and so then you get that piece and uh, <laughs> i get that piece okay. and then we'll uh figure out who gets the next two pieces <laughs> So there we are. This is our lovely rhubarb cake. And really, I mean, switch it up with the fruits of the different seasons. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take us back so we can field some questions. Um, and um, we can talk a little bit more about all of these. these so we great... have we have a cake and a salad. That's that's lunch, I know, darling. Oh, I know. Look at that. So nice. <laughs> Let's oh, get that. Beautiful. Let me hold it. So there we go. We've Look got at that. One oh that look amazing isn't that yeah. awesome yep yep i have a couple uh more questions for you about the rhubarb cake mm -hmm. um can you use whole wheat flour with it you you can use whole wheat flour um you need to dial back how much you use because it does um it is a much drier flour um so we used a cup i would say you want to use three quarters of a cup I haven't actually done it with a whole wheat flour, and normally I do like to swap out the 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 all purpose for things that are a little bit more nutritious. But in this case, I haven't. Um, the other good one is um, if you want to do go gluten free, is a one to one swap, and that would be great too. Almond flour wouldn't work. Um, I don't think you're gonna. I don't think you're gonna get the kind we of rise. Yeah, we have not tried it with almond flour yet. Yeah. And I think I'm going to do that myself because mm -hmm. I love almond. Yeah, yeah, uh, definitely. And with some of the fruits coming in. For yeah, the exactly, exactly. Almond is a great pairing. I think it would be great with peaches. Oh, yeah. When peach time comes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really good. There were a couple of questions. Well, one, there was a request if you were able to slice the cake so people could see the texture on the inside. Um, but could is there is there a difference in the flavor for a smaller stock versus like a larger stock? Are they more or less tart? Oh, with the, with the size of the stocks, you mean? Mm -hmm. Uh, no. I mean the tartness. I don't notice a difference. No. I mean these are just these just grew bigger. They were out there longer. Yeah, they. I mean, some are smaller, as some are bigger. As I mean, opposed you know, to, yeah, yeah, they they're bigger at first, and they get smaller as they, you know, as they as as summer comes. They stop producing stalks completely by by. Uh, well, they never stop completely, but the stalks get really pretty, pretty puny, mm -hmm. and the leaves get huge. That's what happens is the leaves just grow and then they sprout. Then there's a there's a flower that comes out. It's a member of the rye family, so. The, the flower, this flower stalk produces these long, long stalks that have that that have a little tiny barely a, a bloom on them. And then they produce this kind of seed, which is their seed. But I grow them from plants. It's um, I've never tried growing rhubarb from seed. Uh, I don't know that it would. I mean, you buy them for as a plant usually when you when you buy them for your garden. So that's really the way to go. And but anyway, this yeah. it's a buckwheat family. Right. Is that what I said? Yeah. You said rye, I think. 
you're right. It's buckwheat. Never mind. <laughs> buckwheat. But still, um, to your point, it's but, still. Um, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, there, sorrel, as I said earlier, sorrel is their closest relative. If you have sorrel in your garden, you know how it grows. The rhubarb grows the same way. So anyway, yeah, there you Great. go. But it's cool. The heat, the heat really, it doesn't like the heat. So, yeah. It does not like the heat. That's a good point. It is a, definitely a cool weather plant. Okay, so we're going to cut into it. Awesome. Great. We'll be so excited. While you're cutting, could you bake this in a rectangular glass dish as well? Someone who doesn't yes. have a spring, like a spring form yes. pan? Yes, you, you totally can. You okay. Can cut into it. Okay. So, let me see if you can... Can you see this? Let me let me do the overhead. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Great. Get get it close. It's easier for my end, and I think it's a better camera to be able to see this. Okay. So we've got the layers of pink. It looks like jelly almost, but that's just the pink from the um, from the rhubarb, and you know on both sides. Um, if you were to use little chunks. You know, they may, depending on how chilled your batter is, if your batter is warm, you're going to get some settle settlement in there, right? So the pieces will settle. But this is just, it, it's like a thick layer, it looks like a thick layer of, of jam, really. So this is why it's so fabulous. The, the flavoring in the cake is so great and the texture is so great. And throw a little whipped cream on there and mm, 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 cut mm. me a little piece. <laughs> a little piece. Uh <laughs> You're gonna make uh, everyone really, really jealous. Yeah, somebody, someone is wondering if you could place a layer of rhubarb on the bottom of the cake, then chill the batter, and then add another layer on top. Totally worth a try. I would make sure that you um, have a good, um, uh, well, well buttered bottom, so that you know that it, it's gonna juice, and there's, it's. it's you know, there's no, actually, there's no sugar to, to caramelize anything, um, but it'll juice. Yummy. There you go. I think it's really worth a shot. I haven't done that, but I think it's a great idea. Yum. Mm. How's it taste, Adrian? Mm. <laughs> really taste the cardamom. You can really taste the cardamom and the yeah, cinnamon, too. Really nice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. Lots of, lots of love uh, coming from people who are watching and a little bit of jealousy, I'm sure. But you guys get to eat it. We don't. <laughs> time food. You can well, eat this anytime. We will have to get the recipe and make it for sure. Mm -hmm. um, what other suggestions do you have for using rhubarb? Like, what other ways could you use it since it's such a fun one? Oh, food? well. Um, so, as I said, I think I, I mentioned a couple of ways already. The um, uh, cutting them, slicing them thin. And I'll show you pretty much what we're talking about. Why don't you? Move this off for just a second. Um, so you want to slice them, take the end off, and slice them like maybe like this. We we might want to switch to the oh. other camera just to see that a little bit better. Thanks. Okay, so you want to slice them really thin, like um, like you'd slice a cucumber if you're going to do, you know, well, I guess cucumbers. What if but Mm -hmm. Kind of like this, and you 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 can either put a little sugar on them and let it sit there for a little while before you add it to the salad. Toss them around, let the sugar kind of absorb, and put them in. Or you could just have them raw like this with no sugar on them. They're a little bit, hmm. yeah, they're actually really good. These are good. So what about? Do you remember a long time ago we made a um. A tart, a puff pastry tart with these sliced yes. that way with an yes. orange glaze. Yes, yes, we did. It's, it's uh, it might be on the website. Do you think? No. no okay. No. Okay. But, but anyway, it's uh, we just I just used puff pastry and I rolled it out and kind of did a little edge on it so so that you know it, it would be a little different um, texture from the uh, out, outer edge and then I cut the rhubarb and we just sliced it. I and think we, we layered, did kind of a paste. We, we layered, layered them, them like, like this. Yes, that's right. Because puff pastry needs about 20 minutes in a very hot oven. If you thin cut uh, rhubarb like that, it's it's cooked in 20 minutes. Yes, There's is. a lot of water in this. So we had them very, we just did a couple rows of them. And we probably and they just must put have, a little bit of a we, sugar on We must have put a little sugar. Oh, and then the orange glaze. That was the other thing. That went out. Did that go after? I think it went after. Yeah, yeah. after it came out warm, we did like an orange marmalade mm -hmm. glaze. Yeah. Super simple. Um, yeah, you could use marmalade and just melt, just. Uh, warm, you know, it. warm it up 
and just uh, paint, paint it with marmalade. And that would really go well. The orange and the rhubarb goes very well together in terms of flavors. It's kind of like the cardamom, you know, it's got a really great, it, it, they play off of each other very nicely, Yeah, those two flavors. Now, if you want to go savory, um, there are some stews, as I mentioned, um, that are made uh, with rhubarb. Um, it's not really the stew season coming into summer, um, but, you know, you could, this rhubarb freezes beautifully so you could, rhubarb comes back in the fall too when would, the when the water when the right when the weather gets cooler again you get another splurge of rhubarb so that's why it, it's used often in in stews yeah. not often but that's why it can be used in stews yeah but um as far as sauces are concerned i mean you know you can just do like a nice they, they fall apart you know so it just becomes very saucy just when you cook them, you don't have to mill them or, you know, grind them or put them through the food processor. They just sit there and it, you know, just this wonderful sauce. Yeah. I mean, try, try cooking it with some strawberries and some vanilla, vanilla, strawberries, and uh, rhubarb. And then and you get yourself an incredible. One thing that I should mention mm -hmm. is that when you're doing, um, a, if you decide you're just going to do um, the uh, rhubarb as a, a, just boil, like I like it, you know, put it on top of ice cream, cut the, cut the pieces you know, about, you know, about here, I'll show you uh, about this thick. And an inch and a half. what happens is the uh, if you cut them longer than that and put them in like long pieces, then you see all this fiber that happens when they cook. The fiber will be cooked, but it'll be long. But there'll be a lot of stringy pieces in your in your in your sauce. So you don't want that. You want to you want to break them down, cut them short pieces so that you have little sh short pieces of fiber. So just keep that in mind if you're going to be using them just as a as a plain sauce, which I think is great. You could serve it over custard. You could serve it over, you know, with like a perfect part of a parfait, or you know, um, mm -hmm. really almost anything. I mean, you can you can do a panna cotta with it. You know, pound cake. Pound cake with, well, with rhubarb sauce. Yeah, well, that's kind of what we're doing here. It is kind it? of what we're doing here. But it's a little more. A little simpler. You buy the pound cake. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. No, you want to make this. This this is all, all the ingredients are just great, wonderfully paired. Yeah. So well, this has been lovely and wonderful. Thank you both so, so, so much uh, for this because, I mean... It's been amazing hearing about all these delicious recipes. And I just want to go right now. And lots of people in the chat saying they just want to run right out to the farmer's markets and get some rhubarb now. They're going to keep their eyes open for it so they can make these delicious recipes. And we so get thank you so much. Thank you yes. all. And eat your greens and enjoy these. These are guilt-free guilt-free um, dishes. Yes, and they are.